이 순간 나에게 주신 이 독잔을 거둬줘요 다가오는 죽음이 난 너무나 What you're listening to now is one of the iconic songs from the musical Jesus Christ Superstar by the legendary composer Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber. This song is known as one of the most difficult musical scores to perform, and one actor who performs it wonderfully is Michael K. Lee, who has performed it in both Broadway and Seoul, in both English and Korean. He has recently been taking on more roles, both on and off the stage, and to tell us more about that, we have him joining us in the studio today. Welcome. Thank you very much. What an honor to be here today. So listening back to that, actually, does it bring up any memories? I know you were one of the more first major roles in, in the Korean language was Jesus Christ Superstar some five, six years ago, right? It was. The, the memories come rushing back to me when I hear that. I mean, I haven't heard that song in Korean recorded like that in a long time. So uh, I was actually told that we were going to listen to that before the <laughs> before our interview started but i didn't expect those emotions to come back to me as they did and so um what kind of emotions are coming back to um you? you know it was a very special time in my life uh you know coming back to korea to do a uh, a new part a part that i'd never played before you know i'd done jesus christ superstar on broadway but in a different part uh i'd done uh judas in seattle and i played simon zeolotes in um on Broadway. Uh, but, you know, I hadn't played Jesus yet. And so coming here to do that, um, it was an extreme challenge for me. Um, at the time, I wasn't, um, Korean wasn't as uh, in my mouth as much. Yes, yeah, so I understand that was your first uh, Korean language, major, w- major Korean language. It wasn't language. actually. I came okay. in 2006 with Miss Saigon, ah, okay, okay. Um, which was amazing and which introduced me to Korea. But uh, Jesus Christ Superstar is the show that sort of cemented my presence here mm. um, and sort of gave me the impetus to make Korea my home. Mm. Yeah. And then that must have been difficult, though, because, you know, uh, I understand English is your you know main language. It then, is. Uh, Korean, you, you spoke a bit of it, but you weren't uh, fluent as such. You know, uh, I'd like to even say I spoke a bit of it when I came here, but <laughs> that would be exaggerating. Um, you know, I was born in the United States. I was born in Brooklyn, New York. And so, you know, more than anything, you know, I grew up with a, with a New York, Brooklyn accent. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but uh, growing up in Buffalo, that sort of got smoothed out. Um, when I came in 2006, I came for uh, Miss Saigon, which is a uh, sung through pop opera. And so I sort of approached it as, you know, singing an opera, you know, sort of learning things phonetically and whatnot. But when I came back for Jesus Christ Superstar in 2013, um, I sort of challenged myself to say, you know what, it's it's more than just saying the words. It's about knowing what you're saying, believing what you're saying, investing what you're saying. And what better part to do that with than Jesus in Jesus Christ Superstar, you know, one of the most iconic parts in the world who sort of embodies embodies pathos and embodies mm. you know that uh, emotionality yeah and there's, so there's so much uh, emotion and to explore there yeah but then since then your career here in korea has flourished it you, has you've been yeah. doing so much and especially over the last year you've been doing such a diverse uh, range of things i mean can you talk us a little bit about what's sure. been going on um, well not just last year but the past several years i've been very blessed that uh you know, sort of it's been uh, project after project after project. Last year was particularly wonderful because um, I was able to revisit a few shows that I'd done uh, here in Korea. Um, I did uh, Notre Dame de Paris, where I played the poet Gringoire. Um, I played uh, Frankenfurter, Dr. Frankenfurter in the Rocky Horror Picture Show, uh, which was wonderful. Mm -hmm. And then I also uh, played Hedwig, uh, in Hedrick and the Angry Inch in Taiwan. Mm. So it was my first time to Taiwan and performing overseas here in Asia. Um, and then in the beginning of the year, I began the year shooting my first uh, main part in a television drama called Huayugi. Mm. And, um, you know, it was, uh, I don't remember any free time last year, <laughs> but the year prior to that, I think I did four musicals. So, um, you know, it's been, you know, there's, I mean, you've been doing musicals. I mean, I mean, your whole life. You have a career spanning almost uh, twenty plus twenty-five years, almost. Yeah, almost. 
but uh, as you're saying, you're making your Korean TV debut last year. I mean, yeah. how, what was that like? I mean, well, um, you know, it was my Korean drama debut. Mm-hmm. Prior to that, um, I did a reality show called an, a reality real, uh, a reality audition show called The Phantom Singer. Yeah, where you won the judges. I was one of the judges. Yeah, one mm-hmm. of the producers, and sort of that that sort of gave me the exposure to Korean audiences on a grand scale. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was um, super exciting. But in terms of not being myself in terms of um, sort of jumping into a role that wasn't me, even though they they did their best to write the part as similar to me as possible <laughs> <laughs> as, a, as a bilingual um, Korean American, uh, you know, it was it was very exciting and super challenging. But, you know, we made it through and I learned a lot. And, you know, last week I just did another guest star appearance on another drama. So, you know, it, it's getting easier uh it's still always a challenge but you know entering into that drama world in addition to the you know this flourishing musical world is is nothing but a blessing for me is that was that part of a plan perhaps to go into different things like go into like tv uh dramas uh coming to korea and like or did these opportunities just come up it's always sort of a combination of both. I'd, okay. I'd love to pretend like I had this grand, you know, <laughs> design of, of saying, you know, I'm going to do musicals first and then I'm going to do a reality television show and get popular through that and then I'm going to do a drama. Mm. You know, I, I've been very fortunate um, that these opportunities have presented themselves when they did. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't pretend like I planned them, but, you know, it's always been a desire of mine and a goal of mine to not just be in one medium. You know, I love film. I love uh, television. Um, I've always loved the stage. You know, the stage has been part of my life since I was a little boy. Um, but uh, uh, I've, I've always wanted to explore um, the other mediums fully. And so um, when these opportunities presented themselves, it wasn't something totally foreign to me. It was mm. something that, you know, I was somewhat familiar with. You know, when I graduated from now, prior to graduating from college, I went to Hollywood and I was a production assistant on several films, a personal assistant to an actor. Um, so I, I knew what the process was. And I started looking into, I actually started looking into film school because I wanted to sort of add on to what my experience as a musical, as a stage actor um, was. And so, um, yeah, you know, it, 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 it all was a very wonderful opportunity that I was prepared for. So I was very lucky in that sense. Briefly, personal assistant to uh, a film actor. Anyone we might know? Yes, indeed. You're not going to say though. I can actually. It's okay. it's been such a long time ago. Um, Russell Crowe. Wow. Yeah. No way. <laughs> Before Russell took off in the states, uh, not in, uh, well, yeah, actually in the states. He was yeah. he was a big star in of Australia. Course. Of had course. Had done Romper Stomper and. Um, mm, so you've and, uh, uh, you've always been close to stardom, I should we say? I guess so. Yeah. yeah you know, but I. I I didn't know who Russell was at the time, and neither did American audiences. Mm. You know, you know, only people who knew Australian film at the time. Mm. But you know, I became a big fan of his. I saw how hard he worked, mm. how di- diligently he worked, and uh, he was always encouraging of me if if it was something that I had a passion for to to really go for it. Mm. Yeah. Wow, that's really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> something I think these audiences are going to be the first to know. So wow, great we've, got, we've got an exclusive. Yes, how exciting. So let's go back to your career, though. Mm-hmm. So let's uh, talk about this year as well, because you've been doing, um, aside from musicals, you've also been doing concerts, as such, been, yeah. uh, standalone concerts with your name on it as well. Yes, yes. We started a, a new concert series this year um, called the Michael K. Lee Ann Series, um, and we launched it with a big bang with one of the world's most uh, prolific and most talented, in my opinion, uh, male musical theater actors named Ramin Karimloo. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's known around the world for playing the Phantom of the Opera. He's known on Broadway for his Tony-nominated Tony performance in Les Miserables as uh, Jean Valjean. And, um, you know, I got to know him uh, last year when I did, oh, I forgot about this. This last year, I also did the Phantom of the Opera for the first time. <laughs> I played the role of Raoul. Okay. And uh, we met during that process, which was very quick, um, but uh, but we got along very well. And we seemed to like the same things and we went through our careers and we played a lot of the same parts. Mm. So I said, you know, it would be really fun if we got together in a room and sort of had a drink and sort of pretended to put a show together. And we did that a few times online and we said, Mm. I'm going to see if I can try to get this done. And luckily for me, I had the right people around me to make it happen. And we finally got to it uh, this past January. And it was it was amazing. It was really, really 
a dream come true. Do you think uh, your recent career, especially after appearing on that audition program, opened the doors to allow you to do these kind of concerts with your name on it as such? I think so. You know, there's, uh, there's you know, in, in on Broadway and the West End as well, there's a, there's a limited theatre viewing audiences and and whether that's because it sort of has become sort of a luxury sort of thing to do because it's so expensive or because you know you're you're limited to your theater space as to how many people see your show mm. and then you know you can't do it for 10 years but you know television and uh and film you know your your audience is endless you mm. know you, you wherever they can bring that celluloid or digital film you know you're going to be seen so the fact that you know Phantom Singer and the the television dramas that I did, um, Huayugi and um, and the recent one I did on MBN, uh, Chiugi, the Sarang Chiugi. Um, you know, I'm being broadcast into every home in Korea as well as every Korean drama loving country in the world. <laughs> you know, it's really expanded my outreach and my um, my visibility to people who wouldn't necessarily just see me through theater. So because of that, I'm able to do these sort of uh, solo concerts of and people who wouldn't necessarily come to the theater or come to see a live concert are coming. And so it's, it's been really exciting. That must be a lot of fun because it really shows yourself rather than play a different character, I guess. So even it does. though you're seeing these it, songs. It's actually terrifying, brother. But um, <laughs> it's... Uh, Why you know, it terrifying? Because, because as an actor, you know, you can sort of hide behind sort of the right, words right. and the, the persona of somebody else. But when you're doing yourself, when you're doing a, a solo concert, you're actually exposing you through mm. other people's songs or other people's words. And if you do some of your own music, you know, it's totally exposing. And so... Uh, the process of how much you, you know, th- this is something that's new to me. And so, you know, I wrote the show, I conceived the show with my wife, um, Kim Barhola. Um, and uh, it was, it was, I'm not going to lie, it was a very difficult process. Mm-hmm. But I, I've been comparing, I've been using this metaphor for my concert the whole time. It's, it, it was not unlike giving birth in my, <laughs> I can only imagine, you know, we, we, the whole process of, of uh, being pregnant and then actually giving birth was something we'd never want to go through again. But once you see that, once you see the baby in your arms and you see that it's beautiful and it came out, all that hard work and all that pain and suffering was worth it. And that's sort of where we came to. And we're that's really qu- looking to having another baby, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that's quite a metaphor you've walked yes. us through there. Yes, but then what about uh, next, as in like, uh, what roles do you want to take on next? I mean, what, where, does, where does your career go, uh, carry on from here now? You know, from here, you know, I've, I've sort of afforded myself the luxury to be a little bit more selective. Um, and that's not to say that I wasn't selective before or that, you know, when opportunities came, I didn't jump at them. But, you know, I've been working so hard for the past, you know, I guess since my career started, but particularly the last five years six years now that I've been here in Korea that, you know, I've sort of taken a little break after my last solo concert to sort of reassess exactly what direction I want to go in. Mm. And so um, it's been a wonderful respite, the fact that, you know, I've sort of been able to get back to my creative soul, my creative self, um, getting back to writing a little bit. Um, writing oh. the concert and developing the concert was really great for me mm. because it sort of sort of got my, my head around uh, sort of key points in storytelling and and sort of how to tell a story to to not just one person, but many people. Is there any kind of roles you want to take on? Like, is there something you've wanted to always try and do, but not been able, had the opportunity so far? Um, I mean, because you have had a very vi- diverse set of characters that you've played. I mean, from Jesus, as we said, superstar, to a transvestite alien in the Rocky Horror Show. Yeah. Uh, just uh, all sorts. Yeah. You know, I, I can't. There, there isn't one particular role that I'm looking for. I, I do love um, breathing new life into new characters. And so original musicals are sort of something that is a passion of mine and has been a passion of mine since I started my career. Um, you know, doing revivals and doing sort of licensed musicals that have been done before, you sort of get, um, you, you have a guide as to where you're going. But when, you know, it's just words on a page from a playwright or a screenwriter's mind or a composer's, you know, a composer played a melody on a, on a piano and it's you're the first person to give that life. Mm-hmm. What if that's the most thrilling thing about this art form to mm-hmm. me. And so, you know, I, I'm sort of putting my hat into the writing world as well. Um, but, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be able to do some, some things here in Korea. Um, whether it's with solo concerts or with uh, dramas or with uh, 
films or do you think the the scene in Korea has grown so much that has allowed you to do this as well because over the last I would say 10 years musicals have grown bigger than perhaps uh, you when you first arrived right yeah they've they've uh, they've definitely exploded you know grown would be sort of putting it lightly uh, the Korean musical scene here in Korea is is I think it's it's on her it's it's on another level mm. um, I think it's a third largest producing uh, musical producing country in the world behind the United States and and London, behind mm-hmm. the West End. Um, and so uh, it's, you know, the producers are incredibly prolific and there's so much work that's being done here. Um, you know, the popularity of the musical art form, the musical medium is something that we're all, all musical actors and people involved with musicals are very lucky to have. Mm-hmm. You know, there's an exposure here. You know, you can become well known through musicals here in Korea. And you really can't yet in the States or the West End, Mm. I think, in my opinion. Yes, that's where we're going to have to wrap things up. I've Mm -hmm. been speaking to the musical actor Michael K. Lee. Thank you for coming on the show today. And all the best for all your projects going ahead. Thank you so much. What a pleasure to meet you.